open tutorial island here. All right, so today we are going to create HM Fly. And I have a vague idea on how to do this. I don't even know if we're gonna complete this in one session, uh, but we're gonna try. The concept is we go to the skill menu, we use a skill called Fly, it brings up the map, and it allows us to select all the towns that we have been to, um, that we have unlocked to fly to. First thing we need to do is create a world map. Let's find a, like a, an easy world map to access. Or that's got like a few easy areas to get to. I guess we can use this and we'll just use like the first three towns here on the left. Oh my God, that's not gonna work. I think because I changed the tile sets around, yeah, maybe I need to change this to world map. Nope, still messed up. I don't remember how that happened. Oh, I, that's probably it. World A1, world A2. Uh, we got what, B and C, world B and world C. Let's apply this, press okay. There we go. That looks much, much better. Much, much better. What is this? What is this thing? A tower, like a watchtower, I guess. Okay, well, right here we have a town, a castle, a cave, and whatever this is. So we'll use these four locations and we'll just have them lead into other sample maps. So we need a town, just a generic normal town. Uh, we need a castle. So let us choose, uh, that castle's fine. We need a cave. So let's load a cave here. here we go stone cave. And then we need, that's some sort of tower i'm not really sure what it's supposed to be uh, probably something in the fs or fs sf tile set that's what it looks like to me anyways there's tower but that's not quite what that is let's just say that this is tower first floor uh, we need to go through each of these maps and create ways back to the world map so we're just going to do the quick event creation transfer that'll bring you out right here uh, we'll just have them facing down copy paste this a few times and actually, we could just take this and also put it in these other areas. Is this supposed to be a big door, I guess? So we'll we'll go ahead and put the event here. So we have ways to the world map. Now we need to do some quick event creations to get to the maps, the individual maps themselves. So this is going to the normal town. This is going to the castle. So let's have it transfer you to the castle. Now we also need to change the direction to up. Copy this, paste it for the second area. Create this. Oh, that's not what we wanted to do. We wanted to, we wanted to do the quick event creation. This goes to the stone cave and this goes, I keep doing that. I'm so used to going into the event screen. This goes to the tower. Now what we need to do is on each of these maps, we need to have an event that unlocks a switch for that area, uh, saying that we have discovered that area. So control switches. Change the maximum to 40 here because we don't have enough switches. Town found. Let's go ahead and name the rest of these. Castle found, cave found, and tower found. So here we'll turn town found on. Turn self switch A on. Create a new event page for self switch A. And this will be an auto run event. So when you first come here, it will turn the town found switch on. And we're going to copy this. We're going to paste it on the castle map. The only thing we're going to change is the switch to castle found. We're going to do the same thing for the remaining two maps. Since we're in the stone cave, change it to cave found. Since we're in the tower, we're going to change it to tower found. Here's where things get interesting. So RPG Maker has this built-in function where you can right click a map and click save as image. So we're going to save it as an image. We are going to save it in our project folder under pictures. So we're going to open our paint program or graphical editing program, whatever you want to call it. We're going to open that picture that we just saved, except I don't remember what it saved as. We should have changed. We probably should have changed the name of it because I don't see anything. Oh, here we go. It saves it by the map ID. So here we have our world map. This is not the best quality, but it'll work. Do we want to resize it in the editor? Do we want to resize it in the in RPG Maker? I feel like the editor would be easier. So we're going to go to System 2. The screen width is 8, 816 by 624. So we are going to resize the map to that. And we're going to save our resized map. Now, there are other ways you could do this. You could divide the map into sections. 
And when you call this common event, when you start cycling through towns, you could have it go through different sections. But just for the sake of getting the base concept done and tutorialized, we're just going to use this picture, however small these may end up being. There's one more thing that I want to create, but I need, well, I'm not really creating it, but I'm taking it. I believe it's window. And we are going to take this cursor here, copy it. We're going to create a new image, paste it, and then we're going to save this under image pictures as cursor. You would think there'd be a simple 90 degree option. It's not going to actually change the size, is it? Nope. Oh, here we go. So we're going to take this and rotate it. Here we go. This is, this is what we wanted. So now we have this cursor. Okay. So now we have the cursor and we have the map. Let's go ahead and create our skill. All this fly. Uh, is there like, is there wings? It's probably wings somewhere. There's some bat wings there or some demon wings, whatever those might be. Is there a feather? Maybe there's gotta be a feather somewhere. There it is. We use the feather icon. Uh, it's going to, we'll just say skill type. Nah, we could do magic. We'll do skill type magic. Scope. I don't think we want scope at all. Occasion. Menu screen. Let's create a common event real quick. We just want to grab the name. We'll call it fly. Uh, and then in our skill, we will have it call the common event fly. I believe this is all we need to do as far as the skill goes. Actually, let's go ahead and give it to Albert. And then in our common event, under fly... We want to show picture and we want the picture to be that map 024 that we resized. We also want to show picture number two and we want that to be the cursor. I don't really have a specific place that I want this at the moment. So we'll just set it to 100, 100 for right now. I just want to test this out. Start a new game here. Oh, we didn't even start on the world map. We should probably do that. So we've got our character here. Let's use fly. There we go. And then we've got the cursor right there. We need to outline the cursor in black because it's kind of hard to see it right there. But as you can see, when we pull, when we use fly, it pulls up the world map and then it pulls up this cursor alongside with it. So we're at a good starting point. Let's open the cursor real quick and get that outlined. Oh, I don't have the plugin on this PC. I don't think this is going to look like uber good, but yeah, it's better than it was at the very least. 281, 196. So that'll start the cursor right at the town. I also have, how big is the, I had like a background in turn zero that I was using for text. How big that is. It's 400 by 36. I don't really want it to quite be that big. What about the item backer? The item backer is 200 by... 25 that's better so i'm actually gonna also save this to tutorial island and we're probably going to use this as the text backer not that we really need that but and then we're also going to add the I, I think i already have the plugin here yeah text to picture so a key part of this tutorial is having this plugin i have a short on this plugin if you want to watch it to uh, see how to add it and how to use it it's very useful it will take any text that you would normally type into the show text command and turn it into a picture so that you can use the show picture command to do things with it. So let's go to plugin text to picture. What is this town called? Normal town. We'll just say normal town. We want a, per a particular text color for it. Let's just do two, whatever two is. I don't actually remember what two is and then show picture none. Well, we definitely want it on the same on the same Y as cursor. So we'll probably do 300 196. Okay, let's give this a test and see what this looks like. Okay, cursor's a little off. I think because it uses the... Yeah, I think it's because it's using upper left. Now that I'm thinking about it, do we want the name to show up above? What What do you think? Do, would it be better to have the name show up above the place where the cursor is? Or just in like a generic... Yeah, let's put the item backer up here. We'll put normal town on top of it. And as the cursor moves, we'll just have that change. I think I think it'll be better that way. I also believe that's how Pokemon does it, right? Like it has the name up in the top left corner and then uh, wherever you're hovering over, the name will change. So let's go ahead and change the text position to zero, zero. I actually want to change this to picture number four because we're going to put an item backer in here. 
to kind of make the text readable. I want to put a label here as well so that we know we can use jump to label command later to know where we're at. So we'll just call this label normal town. I want to keep playtesting this so that we can get the basic that basic thing down and it'll be easier to change as we go. So I want to make sure everything's in the right location at the moment. Uh, yeah, we we changed this. This needs to be picture number three. And then I almost want to use the uh, the info backer that I had. We'll just resize it and we'll make it 300. Yeah, let's use that because the item backer that I was using was not quite big enough. Yeah, this this is much better. Oh, real quick before we play test, I want to change one more thing, and that is the origin for the cursor. I don't want to be the upper left. I want it to be the center. And that should put the cursor in the correct place. There we go. It's it kind of far away or it's kind of like over top of it. So we need to move it to the left just a little bit. But this is what we want to see. Let's take the cursor. We're going to move it to the left just a little bit. So we'll say it's 270 at the top here. We want to start a loop take the normal town stuff we're gonna put it in the loop what order i guess if you press it would be up 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 i guess it would always be it would always be up or down so in this loop for the first town we're gonna create a conditional branch at the bottom of all this that says if the up button is being pressed then it will jump to label that we will name castle let's just go ahead and create a loop here and then we'll create the label. Okay, so if up button gets pressed, it jumps to label or this is, I think the wrong, this is the wrong command for sure. We want to jump to label. So if you're, if the cursor is currently on the town and then we need to add another conditional branch that says if the cancel button is being pressed, then we want it to erase all pictures. So we need to erase picture one and we're using four pictures in each set. So we need to erase picture one two, three, and four. Uh, and then actually above this, we're gonna go ahead and handle down as well. So let's do a conditional branch. If the down button is being pressed, then we want to jump to label tower, which we will create in just a moment. I actually think this is perfect. The reason that we have it in a loop is because we don't want the character below the picture to be doing anything. If you don't have it, this event in a loop, waiting for one of these button inputs when the player is pressing up down to go to the next the the next town the character below the picture will also be moving and we don't want that that's why you want to keep it in the event processing so that the character cannot move we're going to take this entire thing we're going to copy it and we are going to paste it and paste it again and paste it again and then we want to put a comment in here to kind of break things up a little bit i'm just going to call it call each comment the name of the area that it's the loop for. All right, so our normal town is pretty much set and done. Now we need to just go through here and all the things that say normal town, we just need to change to castle. If button up gets pressed, it needs to go to stone cave. If down is being pressed, it needs to go to normal town. Oh, also under the cancel button, we need to exit event processing. We need to put that under each one. You know what I just realized? We don't have a condition for if the OK button gets pressed. So let's just add that real quick before we forget. If the OK button is being pressed, then we want to transfer the player to normal town uh, facing down. And we'll copy this and we'll we'll paste it in these uh these other these other scenarios. Let's finish castle here. We have it saying castle, if button up is being pressed, it goes to stone cave. If button down is being pressed, it goes to normal town. If the OK button is being pressed, we want it to transfer you to the castle direction facing up. And don't worry, we will get to how you unlock areas and you block areas from being selected that you haven't unlocked yet. So we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. But right now, I just want to get this uh, this first part done and out of the way. All right here's stone cave. We want to change this label to stone cave. Change the text to stone cave, except with a space. <laughs> if up gets pressled, pressled? If up gets pretzled, <laughs> if up gets pressed on the stone cave, we want it to go to the tower. And if it gets pressed down, we want it to go to the castle. And then we need to make a condition for if the okay button is being pressed. If it is, 
then we want it to transfer you to the stone cave with your direction facing up. Final section, which is the tower. We need to change this label to tower. I'm gonna change this text also to tower. If up button gets pressed, it goes to the normal town, I believe, because that would go back to the beginning of the cycle. If button down is being pressed, it goes to the stone cave, except there's a space. There's a space in that one too, so we need to take that out because when you jump to label, it has to match the exact name of the label it is jumping to. There can be no extra spaces or, or anything like that. It has to exactly match. Paste here for the okay condition, and then this should transfer you to tower with your direction facing up. Okay, do you believe everything is ready here? Let us take a look at this and see if it works. I'm actually gonna use the controller to test this out. Hmm. Oh, you know what we need to do? We need to add a small weight in there because it's processing it so fast. It's moving it super, super quickly. So we need to add a small weight in there. And then also we need to get the coordinates for the other areas and change the cursor. So this is 261, 180 for the castle. Uh, we move it over a little bit. 242, 152 for the cave and 185, 146 for the tower. Now, under at the bottom of each of these loops, we're going to add a small wait time because I, I think that's why the it, the the names are like it's going so quickly to the next thing. I believe this will fix it, but if not, we'll uh, we'll figure out what the issue is and go from there. So we're just going to have it wait five frames. All right, let's give it another test here. Oh, there we go. See, it is cycling if I hold the up button. If I just press it once. I wonder if I need to make the wait timer a little higher. Let's take it up to 10 to be, or I wonder if it would make more sense to have wait after you press the command. Do you think that that maybe is the issue? Let's try that. Well, if it jumps to label, it's not going to execute this. So maybe it needs to be above it. There's a basic step. I think I'm forgetting here. There we go. That actually works much, much better, much, much better. I think we need to take the wait timer up to i don't know if it should be 10 seconds or maybe seven it's just a little bit too fast that is definitely better so i think that's what we wanted let's take it up to 10 and we'll do that for down as well and okay so now every time the player presses a button it waits 10 frames and then executes the contents of the conditional branch just to prevent it from like losing its mind and moving a thousand times Let's give this one final play test here. Perfect. This is perfect. So as you can see, uh, the, the base form of this works great. So it, it hovers over each area. It has the name of it in the top left corner. And, uh, you know, the cursor's on it. The name changes as we go through each area. In Pokemon, when you, un you, you cannot fly to a new area until you have been there first. And that is the reason that on each of these sections or on each of these maps, we had it unlock a switch or turn a switch on when you first got there. So now in our common event, we need to set up a conditional branch for each of these loops. I don't think we want to set up one for normal town because I think I we want to st like, you don't want to even have this skill available unless somebody has been to an area first. So we'll leave normal town the way it is, but we want to create a new conditional branch right below the castle comment. Actually, now I'm thinking about the placement of this. Yeah, I I, I think I just came up with something. I was going to do it a, a much longer way, but I think the way I'm, I'm about to do it will make this much easier to modify in this form. So right below your label, where it says label castle, we want to put a conditional branch. If castle found is off, then it needs to jump to the next label, which is stone cave. We're gonna copy this. We're gonna paste it right below the stone cave label. If cave found is off, then it needs to jump to tower. Same thing, right below the label tower. If tower found is off, then it needs to jump to normal town. I keep wanting to call it new town for some reason. It needs to jump to normal town. The reason that these are in here is that if you press down, uh, let, let's say you, you've only come out of the normal town, okay, you use fly. If you press down, it's gonna go to the castle label. 
Now inside the castle label is where it draws all the information in the text for the castle. But if you put this conditional branch above here, it should jump to the next label before it even gets here. So with this conditional branch at the top of each section, we sh it should only jump to the labels that you have access to. Otherwise, it's going to end up right back at the ones you already have. So let's let's take this for uh, for a test drive here. Also, let's just start in normal town. So we got normal town. You see, if I, I'm pressing up and down, nothing is happening, okay? Because we haven't unlocked anything. We haven't turned those switches on. Because those switches are off, when I press up, it's going. All right, go to castle. Castle's not unlocked. Go down. Okay, go to stone cave. Stone cave's not unlocked. Okay, go down. It's tower. Tower's not unlocked. Go back to normal town. And because it has it going back to normal town, nothing is changing. So let's leave. Now we're on the world map. Actually, I want to test to make sure it actually... Oh, we didn't... Did we put... We put a teleport in, right? So let's fly to normal town. Oh, yeah. We got to fix that. <laughs> we got to fix that. That didn't work. Well, it did fly us here, but we, we got to make the make sure the pictures erase. But it did work. Okay. So let's, let's do this out of order just to make sure it works correctly. So now we're in stone cave. Let's use fly. And now, as you can see, stone cave and normal town are unlocked, but only those two. Why did it transfer us back to normal town? We'll, we'll look at that in a second. We'll look at that in a second. Okay, so let's go to tower, except that's not a tile you can walk on. That's unfortunate. We'll have to fix that. Let's go to castle then. So we got normal town, castle, stone cave. And it, those are the only three it'll allow, allow me to select. So let's select castle. And now we're at the castle. I'm still a little confused. Why this is an event thing that we have to fix. I'm still a little confused why it took us. Let's try to recreate this. Let's go to the stone cave. Let's open fly. And then let's press cancel. And it puts us back in normal town. We got to figure out why that is. I think I'm going to put in a wait command right here. I think I know what's happening. Um, I'm not entirely sure, but I'm going to put in a wait command right here. I think it's it's the the OK that you're using for fly. I think it is bleeding into the OK right here. So we're actually going to do uh, 15 frames. It's also a little strange to me that the screen goes black for some reason. It doesn't have an animation, right? Yeah, animation none. So that's a little bizarre. That's oh, it's going black because it's transferring you. That's why. Hopefully putting that wait command in there fixes that. But we'll, 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 we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. We needed to make tower passable. We've, had, we've done a few fixes. Let's let's see if this uh, takes care. Of it. Yeah, I think that's what it was. We didn't get the fade that time. Also, we still need to erase all the pictures. Bring fly up. Let's cancel it. OK, it has not teleported us anywhere. So let's we should now have that unlocked. Perfect. Perfect. Down is not working for some reason on tower. I'm not sure why I have to look into that, but let's go to normal town and let's cancel. Oh, thank God. We're still here. Okay. I think we did fix it then. Let's go to normal town. Yeah. We just got to erase the pictures. Okay. So there's a couple things that didn't work right there. Um, for some reason, when we press down on tower, oh, it was jumping to stone cave. That's why. This actually needs to jump to normal town. We need to make sure that when we transfer, all of this gets wiped away when we press OK as well. So we just need to go through each of the loops and paste this under OK. Is there any other bugs that I am I am missing that I need to squash? I think this might be perfect. I think it might be ready. So let's let's give it a shot here. Let's go ahead and test it immediately. Normal town. Uh, okay, it won't let us select anything else. That's good. Let's cancel. Okay, it went away. Let's go ahead and travel. Okay, we're here. Perfect. It's it's working as intended so far. Uh, we want to do this out of order. So let's go to the tower. All right, we're here. We're at the tower. We're having a great time. Things are going swell. It will now let us select between normal town and tower. So that's awesome. Let's fly to normal town. Oh man, look at that. We flew. We, we did it. We flew to normal town. Let's go fly to the tower. Yay. Look at that. We're, we're flying everywhere. What? Okay. We got to fix that. Uh, tower apparently has the wrong, uh, the wrong transfer event. So that's a thing, but so far it's going pretty well. Let's go to castle. 
We're in the castle. Yay. We're having a good time. We're flying. We're flying to the tower. Right. We're in the tower. Things are going great. We're now we're going to just fly our way back to the cat. Wait, when I press down on, oh, I guess I can't. Hmm. That's interesting. So the way I have it set is that when I press down on tower, it goes to normal town. But because normal town is the first town, when you press down on normal town, it goes to the last place. I guess that's probably fine because you're, you're going up physically on the map anyways, right? So let's fly to the castle. Oh my God, it's awesome. We can fly. All right, let's use fly while we're on the world map here. Let's go. Let's go to normal town. All right. Awesome. Finally, we're going to go to stone cave. We're going to fly. And we're going to go to the castle. Look at that. It works almost flawlessly. So fly, fly is done with a few caveats. Let, let's do the bug fixes real fast. Uh, this is not stuff that really matters, but just in case we're going to go ahead and do the bug fixes. Okay. So that transfer event is fixed and actually fly is done, but there's a few caveats. So let's go into the play test so I can tell you all um, some things that could be done differently and much better. I just didn't do those things for the sake of time to show that this can be done and how it can be done. Let's go ahead and unlock all the areas real quick. And actually, we don't even need to do this. We can just open F9 and turn these switches on. Okay, first and foremost, you could have these pictures go away in an animation play on the character. Okay, that's that's super, super simple. You would just go in here before your transfer event. You would erase all the pictures before the transfer event, play the animation, and then do the transfer. Event. Super easy. So if this were me, and I were making this for my own game, instead of having the world map scrunch down to the size of the screen, I would have it stay this size, but have the map move if you select an option that is not currently visible. Um, and that's pretty easy to do using the move picture command. And I might do a fly 2.0 at some point, or if I decide to put it in a game of mine, um, I'll, I'll you know, show the tutorial that way, but moving the picture, I think would be much better. Like having a, a nicer zoomed in version and just kind of moving the picture, I think would look better than this like scrunched up version of the map. This is not bad, uh, but the bigger your world map is, the more strange this is going to look. So I would definitely recommend zooming in, you know, l not resizing the map and just having the map move as you're selecting towns. Uh, if it were me, I just think it would look a little better and it would be a little easier to decipher where you are on the map because, you know, where it's pointing kind of small, kind of hard to see. I mean, it's got the names of everything, which is fine, but um, kind of hard to see. You could also put in a solution for pressing down on tower and then down on normal town. I mean, I, you know, there, there, there's easy fixes for that. If, because you know, right now, if we press down on tower and down on normal town, it just keeps going down, which is a little odd. You know, as far as fly in its Pokemon form, this is as close as I am going to get in this moment. Like, I, I think this is pretty close to like Gen 1, Gen 2 fly, honestly. Um, you're unlocking towns as you get to them, and then they will not allow you to, to select. You know, the game will not allow you to select the town unless you have been there before. Are you going to do an animation to have them move or just do a wipe? I mean, I, I talked about what, you know, how I would make an animation, but... We can uh, we can go ahead and add an animation in there real quick. I'm just going to do it for normal town just to show uh, what it would look like. Is there a, a wind? There we go. That'll work. And then wait for completion. Revive has some good feathering. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah, I kind of like that. I, I kind of like that better. And then I'll show you what, what I meant by, uh, you know, having an animation play. There you go. Kind of like that. Now you could, you, you know, you could also have your character slowly fade out. You could have your character literally like jump off the screen. You know, you can do a couple different things for the animation. Gen 2 had an extra, an extra HM, but as far as the, the, what I had planned to do with the series, this is the final one. So now we can get into some of the more community requested ones. There was a ceiling gold that was recommended. There was, you know, I think a summon system that was asked about. There's been a few different things, uh, like a, a random damage 
skill was requested. So the plan, or at least my plan now, is to start to dive into some of those. And I think those are going to be a little more fun than the HMs. I mean, the HMs were fun, um, but they were... I, I had a framework for most of them, actually. The one that differentiated the most from what I originally had planned was Surf. Surprisingly enough, I thought Fly was going to be far more difficult than it was. And who knows how long this video will end up being after I've done all the cutting and stuff. But I think everything turned out quite well. If you have any ideas, please let me know in the comments. I very much appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching this video or this series. And uh, I plan on doing a lot more of these. Thank you all so much. And I will see you next time.